in the past couple of years, I've been using Bricks heavily, using it on client projects and even built my own personal website using Bricks. But I still go back to Elementor because it is good for some type of clients' websites and it is fun for me to teach. I love teaching Elementor and creating videos on it. But there is one thing I find very painful when I go back and forth from Bricks to Elementor. And if Elementor could just copy and adopt this thing that Bricks is doing, it will make Elementor's lives much easier. Can you guess what it is? You might guess CSS classes that support CSS frameworks. And as much as I love to see Elementor adopt that and bring that feature on, this is much more simpler. I mean, it is so basic, you're gonna really be surprised. And that is the paddings and margins. Yes, I told you, super, super basic, but just hear me out, it's gonna make a lot of sense after you see this. Because the paddings and margins are the most used setting that we probably use in all widgets, containers, and sections. And it wasn't until I started using Bricks full on did I realize that Elementor has been doing this wrong. And quick disclaimer, this video is not meant to slam Elementor, it's to educate Elementor users showing what else is out there, what other builders are doing. That way when we are asking for feature requests from Elementor, we have a better understanding of what to ask for, especially when it comes to the core of Elementor and what they could do to improve our own productivity in our web building processes. Let's take a look at both Elementor and bricks. First off, Elementor. Let's see how their paddings and margins are implemented and then compare them to bricks. All right, we got a new container here. Let's check out our paddings and margins. First off, by default, they're already linked. So if you are going to create different top, bottom, left, or right, you have to go ahead and click it one time. Now, one click might not seem like a big deal, but as we continue, just keep this in mind. These clicks start to add up, and when we're over clicking through every single widget and every single container, these really start to interfere with the whole process. Now, when we do have it linked all together, we're gonna go and let's say top and bottom, they're all the same. This actually is very rare to have. For example, up here, look at my banner up here. We're not gonna have the same top and bottom, left and right they're not gonna have the same exact values. It's always gonna have the same value, usually top and bottom, yeah, they're always mostly the same. Left and right, those values are always mostly the same. But let's say we want to create that in here. Now, what we have to do is we have to unlink it, that's fair enough, and then in the top, we gotta to go ahead, I'm just gonna go and skip and put 100, and I'm gonna do the same here in the bottom. That's okay, we could do that now. A lot of manual stuff has to be done. We have to overdo it, but check this out. Here's where it even gets worse. Let's go ahead and take this down to mobile. Now it's cool, we could see it here in mobile, but as soon as we unlink the value, see it already comes linked again by default. I do not understand why it would be linked by default, but as soon as we unlink it, now we are down to zero. Now, again, this might not seem like too big of a deal, but let's go back over here, and let's say we are going to use RAM. And for our RAM, let's say for the top, we are going to make it 4.75. And then we're gonna do the same on the bottom. I'm gonna copy and paste it, because it's easier. And now we gotta put maybe two RAM on the sides. Okay, that's fine, but let's take it down to mobile. Two RAM on the sides, now that's a lot of space. We might want to drop that down. But you see, we're already at a zero and we got to redo it over. Let me actually link this, undo it. And we can see now the original metrics here grayed out. I'm gonna change this down to RAM. And let's say we wanna make the size 1.5. Well, we gotta unlink it. You gotta remember what you had on the top and bottom. And then you gotta put everything in manually. I'm gonna put 1.25 and then the same over here. And then we gotta remember what we did on the top and bottom. Okay, I know, this is very, very basic. Now let's go over to Bricks and see how they implement their paddings and margins. I'll add a section in here. So you can start off putting in whatever values that you want inside of it. But then if you were to click it once, 
and then put in your value. It is only going to link the top and bottom and same thing for the left and right. This right here is the way we are going to use these the most. We are going to use our paddings and margins like this the most. This is where it makes the most sense because it is very rare for us to have the same value in the top, bottom, left, and right at all times. Most of the time, you're going to have the same values on the top and the bottom and the same values on the left and right. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to put 4.5 RAM, the same values we're using in our elements or example. Then I'm going to put 2 RAM on our sides over here. So that already is a big win. It's going to save heaps of time. Now, let's go ahead and change this to mobile and set it up. Okay, we, again, just like Elementor, we can see the values grayed out. But now, let's say I just want to change the sides. I could go ahead and either leave it unlinked as it is and just change one. 1.25 RAM. It does not affect the other values. But again, let me go ahead and undo it and link it, and look at it doesn't reset everything like it does in Elementor. Why Elementor resets it, I still don't know. It's a huge, huge UX mistake that is happening because look how much quicker we could create this. We don't have to try to figure, remember what we had on the top and bottom. We don't have to re-input in something that we shouldn't have to re-input. And again, I just wanna check it out on tablet and yes, again, on tablet, if you want to do it. So if I have it on desktop and mobile, undo it and want to make an adjustment on tablet, we have to redo the entire process. You can see how now all the clicking, the manually entering in all the values could start to feel cumbersome because when we start to add cards and we're starting to add our grids inside here, our inner containers, well, as we are starting to build out the website, this starts to add up over and over and over. If Elementor could look at what Bricks has done here and how they have implemented something that is so basic, but in such a productive way, imagine how much easier it is going to make the whole website building process for all Elementor users. So please copy this Elementor, I would be so happy and I'm sure many others will be as well. Smart businesses learn from other businesses. They learn from the competition. We do this as web designers. We learn from other web designs, other websites. We see what websites look awesome and we try to replicate and adopt those styles into our own websites to make them look better. Also, as a web design business, we look at what other agencies are doing to make their web business thrive and we try to adopt and even imitate what they are doing to improve our own web businesses. So Elementor is super lucky to have such good competition now where they can look at what they are doing that is so good and start to onboard that, start to adopt that. Now, I got a question for you, for everybody using both Bricks and Elementor. Is there something inside of Bricks you would love to see Elementor adopt, replicate, or even just flat out copy? Drop it inside of the comments. And if you are new to Bricks, never used it yet, and would love to see more comparisons and learn more about it, let me know. Because I got a lot more of these coming out. I got a lot of more content about Bricks, Breakdance, and more coming out for this year because we are in a really good space inside of WordPress. We got some phenomenal tools that we could be using and adding to our skill set that is only going to increase the type of value output that we could create. So don't forget all that good YouTube jazz. You know what is up. Like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon.